Hey, my happy shiny puppies, this is Melody Fletcher, your go-to for everything law of attraction and reality creation. And today I've got a treat for you. What follows is an excerpt from one of our live Q&A calls where people just like you, students just like you, were able to ask me questions and I answered them. And today you're gonna to get one of those. And as you see in the coming weeks, we're gonna be rolling out more and more of these. And if you'd like the chance to be a part of one of these Q&A calls for free, then stay to the end of the video and I'm gonna tell you exactly how to do that. All right, I'll see you on the other side. Bye. So the big question is this. How do we, those of us who feel deep down that we're much more powerful than we've been led to believe, and that there is something to this law of attraction stuff, actually create our own realities? What's the process of simply stepping into the reality of our choice? What about those of us who need this process to make logical, intellectual sense? My name is Melody Fletcher. You've got questions about the technology of reality? and I've got the answers. Welcome to my channel where the law of attraction finally makes some freaking sense. Ready? Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, my elderly muggle parents have health problems, including my mom is now losing her memory. So my question has two parts. It's what, if anything, can we do to help our loved ones toward a more pr uh, positive progression? And two, how do we maintain our happy, shiny puppy vibration when we're heartbroken about what is and frustrated because we know it doesn't have to be like this? Okay. So let me start with the, 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 the second one first, because that's the overall view right. of, you know, how do you make it through when somebody that you love is deteriorating and is, you know, it's full of resistance and you understand that it doesn't have to be like this if they were just let go of their resistance. But, right. you know, this isn't just a problem with seeing elderly parents this way. It's a problem with seeing everyone this way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if you're in a situation where um, anyone in your life, it could be your child, it could be a friend, it could be, you know, somebody that you care about, your husband could be your elderly parents, where they're suffering. And they're going through discomfort. And I know discomfort is way too small a word for what elderly people often go through as they deteriorate. Um, but when somebody is going through that, um, it can be very, very difficult because we wish that we could take it away. And then we might even get really angry at our elderly parents, uh, which is, can be shocking when a bunch of anger comes out and you're like, why am I angry? I love my mom, I love my dad, or I love my grandma, I love my grandpa, right? But I'm so angry at them because what it is is that you're thinking if they would just approach it differently, then they would be better off, then they would live longer, and then you could have more of them. Yeah, and this isn't just with spiritual people. People get, you know, if you see your grandparents or your parents doing something that you consider irresponsible, and then the fear comes up that they might hurt themselves. Uh, and, and we very quickly swap over into treating them like children, which I warn against uh, uh, because your parents and your grandparents are not children. You know, they, they raised you, they lived through probably wars, they, you know, uh, they're adults who have been able to take care of themselves and you for a long time. And it's not fair to suddenly regale them because they're a little bit frail down to, you know, talking to them like their kids and trying to rule their lives like we're their parents. We don't have the right to do that. But it's a lot easier when you understand, and this is not an easy thing to understand, and I know there's gonna be people who are listening to this who are gonna go like, what? That sounds like bullshit. It all depends on where you're at, but you have to understand that nothing is actually going wrong. Yeah? That this is part of a much bigger journey. Yeah? It, it, we look at our lives as one lifetime. We've got 70, 80, 90, 100, if we're lucky, years on this planet. It's one lifetime, this is our entire journey, and that's it. And when you look at it like that, it's very easy to start to despair about anything that didn't quite go the way that you may have wanted it to, or, you know, uh, at the end of your life, maybe there's something that you didn't accomplish, uh, or particularly uh, when you're looking at someone else's life and trying to judge it from the outside and going, oh, I wish they could have done that, or oh, wouldn't it be nice to do that, even though you don't really understand their experience. Yeah. And so what you want to do is understand, number one, that there's a much bigger journey here. Yeah, and that this soul got precisely done as much as they could in this lifetime. They transmuted as much energy as they could. And maybe they took on a big chunk ass energy, yeah? And so you, you might 
you know, want to give them a little bit of credit for that, but also understand that they're a really powerful creator and that they're not actually going anywhere. They're just changing form. Um, and that can, when you really start to embody that, and you really start to understand that, that can bring a great deal of peace where then you can honor your you know, elderly parents, even if they're muggles, and understand that in their human form, they might be muggles, but in who they really are, they're absolutely not. They're masters. Yeah, and they came in, you think about it, you know, I, I always tell you guys, I'm gonna bring in a little bit from the course here, but I always tell you guys that you're gladiators. And it doesn't mean that every human on this planet right now is a gladiator. The gladiators for me are the front runners, the ones who charge in that do the big work. You know, we've always come in to do the big work. We come in taking as much as we can and transmute as much as we can every single lifetime, every single lifetime, every single lifetime. We're the aggressive ones. We're the ones pushing the energy forward in a really aggressive manner, which means that we take on a lot. Now think about what it takes to be the parent of one of those. Yeah? You gotta come in before them, right? So you're coming into an even denser energy. You might need to, by design, come in and be obtuse and be in the fog to give you, dear gladiator, that something to push against, something to have to work yourself out of yeah so they've come in to be that starting point by design and there was an agreement so before you came you know let's say that let's anthropomorphize it and say like you were talking to them like that um we're not physical there but you know you communicated and and said okay i'm gonna need you to come in and i'm gonna need you to be abusive I'm gonna need you to kick my ass. I'm gonna need you to not listen to me. I'm gonna need you to ignore me. I'm gonna need you to dismiss everything that I say. I'm gonna need you to be super religious. I'm gonna need you to be whatever, right? And they so lovingly said, yeah, we'll do that for you. We will do that for you, yeah? We will come in and we will let you hate us. Or, you know, this might be too strong for your situation, but you know, it's, it's another way of viewing what your parents are actually doing, how much of a partnership it actually is, and that nothing has gone wrong, and that they did their job perfectly and beautifully. They did their job, yeah? Because it helped you become who you are now. And so when you start to understand that, you can more bless and honor them, and that's really the energy that you wanna be in as you deal with them, as they're declining, because you can't stop that for them, you can't manifest differently for them, and you probably aren't going to suddenly bring enlightenment to them where they're like, oh, I understand how to use my body now. And you know, um, you, you really, you know, you wanna just have a good time with them. You don't want to pity them, you don't want to look down upon them, you wanna see their power and where they're going, yeah? Because every death is a birth, yeah? And when a new baby gets born, we don't go, oh, we go, yay, baby, right? So if we understand that every death is a birth, um, then we can also go, yay, right? Because you're being reborn. You're being reborn. And that's not to say, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, we're going to go down the rabbit hole a little bit, but I want to say like you get, you die here and then you're reborn as another human. That happens whenever it happens. Yeah, because you can be in both places at the same time. It's multidimensional. Yeah, but the rebirth is sort of you wake up. You wake up from this illusion and you wake up to who you really are. And who you really are is fucking awesome, right? And happy and doesn't have any of these limitations. So why would you deny your mom that? Right? Mm -hmm. And so your mom or dad, right? And so you really want to... Um, you really want to look at them with, you know, seeing their power and not seeing them as frail or weak or something has gone wrong. And I wish that they had just accepted this information. They couldn't. That wasn't part of their path this time, but they did what they came to do. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah, actually, it helps enormously. I, I, I think I have to deal with my own sadness about that. But, um, but yeah, that helps enormously. Yeah. And, you know, and sadness will swap over into anger, obviously. So mm -hmm. um, those are the emotions you have to release, but you cannot ask them to change so that you can feel better. Right. And that's often where people get stuck because I wish my mom, my dad, blah, 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 had done this, had done that, but they're not going to. And now I'm stuck. Now I can't feel better. Instead mm -hmm. of I can separate that and I can express my emotions and just feel my emotions and let them out. Yeah. And deal with them. But then how do I view them so that I'm going to keep fueling that, right? 
-hmm. Because yeah, there's going to be grief and you know, do not think for one second that no matter how much of this work you do, that you will be able to get rid of grief entirely, that your entire family could be decimated around you. And you're like, yes, this is correct. You're not going to turn into a fucking robot. Yeah. Nor do you want to. So when big things happen, yeah, you're going to grieve. When somebody dies, you're going to grieve. And, and I want to send this message really strongly because, you know, I feel like in the last few years of the pharmaceutical industries have sent this message that any kind of sadness is a dysfunction and should be medicated away. Any kind of negative emotion is a dysfunction, should be medicated away. It isn't. It's there for a reason. You're going to be sad when someone dies. You're going to grieve for a while, months, yeah, at best months, possibly longer. Yeah, if you know what you're doing, could be shorter, yeah? You're going to sometimes get really, really angry, and there's a reason for that anger. You don't have an anger management disorder. You don't have a pharmaceutical deficiency, yeah? Our emotions are important, and they're there to be felt. So we have to give ourselves a chance to actually feel them, yeah? Because there's always a message in there, and there's always purpose in there. Um, so don't think for one second that as you do this work for a while and you get really good at it, that you're gonna eradicate all negative emotion. You are not. You are gonna be aware of your negative emotion. You're gonna know how to deal with it and let it out and heal it. But not that, you know, oh no, I failed because I'm grieving. Yeah, of course you're grieving. I mean, yeah. It doesn't have to be devastating anymore, but the closer the person is to you that dies, the more that's gonna get triggered. And that's not a failure on your part. That's just something you have to accept that, hey, it's okay for me to be sad, which is half of what this work is about, really. Hey, it's okay for me to feel insert blank here, right? right? Okay, great. That's, I needed to hear that. I needed to hear that nothing has gone wrong and that they did their job. Okay. They absolutely did. Okay. Yeah. Look at you. You made it all the way to the end of the video. Good for you. So if you'd like a chance to be part of these Q&A calls that we do for free, then all you have to do is get onto my email list. People on my email list get free gifts like this. In fact, I'll even give you another free gift for getting onto my email list, which changes periodically. So I'm not going to tell you what it is so that I can change it, but just check the description down below. Get onto my email list, get your valuable free gift, and you will be invited to take part of one of these Q&A calls yourself where you can ask me whatever you want. Sound like a good deal? I think so. So... Sign up now, get invited to a Q&A call, and get your own answers. Until then, enjoy the videos every week. Thank you for bringing your light to the world. Bye.